The bodies of the Talarian dissidents twitched and convulsed as Sagan's troops executed them in the streets, their blood running in rivulets between the cobblestones. Sagan had ordered the public executions of 200 protesters as a warning to any who would dare defy his iron-fisted rule over the Talarian homeworld. Captain John Griffin watched the horrific scene unfold on the main view screen of the UES Defiance, mankind's first faster-than-light ship, while his bridge crew looked on in stunned silence. They had expected many things when they initiated first contact with the Talarians, but not this. Sagan, the dictator of the Talarians, was a brutal tyrant who routinely tortured and experimented on anyone who opposed him. Despite the Talarians' advanced technology that surpassed anything created by human hands, they were too terrified to resist Sagan's cruel regime. The away team had seen the haunted look in the eyes of the Talarian citizens, the hushed whispers and furtive glances, the scars of old wounds and fresh bruises from the hands of their oppressors. In the conference room, the officers of the Defiance had debated intervening for hours. They barely understood the complexities of Talarian culture and history. Did they have any right to interfere with the internal affairs of a sovereign species? But with every new report of the atrocities committed by Sagan, the moral imperative grew stronger. Every fiber of Captain Griffin's being screamed out that he could not allow such evil to stand unopposed. So Griffin had reached out to the ragtag Talarian resistance movement, secretly meeting with rebel leaders under the cover of darkness, and using the Defiance's technology to aid their fight against Sagan in any way possible without overtly violating the non-interference directives. But now, Sagan had discovered the human's presence on his planet and delivered an ultimatum. Leave immediately and never return or be destroyed along with their alien allies. Griffin had shot back with a demand of his own. Abdicate the throne and face justice for your crimes against sapience, or suffer the consequences. Sagan had laughed in Griffin's face. This pathetic band of humans and their meager ship were no match for the might of his military machine. He would enjoy crushing them and mounting the upstart human captain's head on a pike. Let it be a warning to any other species who dared meddle in his rule. What Sagan failed to realize was that the people of Earth knew a thing or two about facing impossible odds. They had fought gods and demons, eldritch abominations from between the stars and AI masterminds hell-bent on eradicating biological life. Through courage, unorthodox tactics, and sheer stubborn determination, mankind had prevailed against them all. The crew of the Defiance stood ready to uphold that legacy. They were outnumbered outgunned, and far from home. The smart thing would be to run and never look back. But Captain Griffin knew there was only one choice he could make. The human thing. No matter what it took, no matter how long it took, one way or another, Sagan's bloody reign ended today. Mankind had finally taken to the stars. And among those stars, they had found a great evil that could not be allowed to endure. It was time to show the galaxy what humanity was made of. Griffin gritted his teeth as he thumped his hand on the tactical display, the sting of the ambush still fresh. Those Talarian bastards had played them all for fools. Zoltar's ploy had been a masterstroke, leaking just enough enticing intel to draw the human infiltration team into a kill box. The captain's mind flashed back to those harrowing moments, pulse blasts crisscrossing the abandoned factory floor, Men screaming as searing energy bolts cooked them inside their armor. Benson, Halverson, Ishikawa, all cut down before they even had a chance to react. Griffin had only survived by sheer dumb luck. The plasma bolt aimed for his skull, grazing his temple instead as he dove for cover. They'd fought like rabid dogs, squeezing every ounce of advantage from superior human reflexes and marksmanship. But it was futile. The Talarians just kept coming an endless tide pouring into the kill zone. Death on all sides, inevitable and inescapable. Until the defiance had descended from the heavens like an avenging angel, railgun batteries spitting 250 millimeter tungsten rods at hypersonic velocities, each impact liquefying a Talarian platoon in a burst of hyper-expanded steam. The toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest had suddenly turned into a turkey shoot as the frigate's ventral cannons pounded Sagan's troops into bloody mist. In the chaos, 
Griffin and the ragged survivors had managed to hack their way free of the ambush, clawing their way to an extraction zone where a dropship waited to ferry them to safety. But the damage was done. Good men, friends were dead, casualties in a war they never wanted. The chime of the comms panel shook Griffin from the dark reverie. He winced as his fingers brushed the still raw burn slashed across his face. The medics had offered to patch him up, but he'd refused. Let it scar. Let it be a reminder of the price they'd paid and the debt still owed. Report, he growled. Sir, it's about the doomsday weapon. The fear in the rebel coordinator's voice was palpable even over the encrypted channel. We intercepted a transmission. They've moved it to a black site and Shaw... Spit it out. Shaw got inside. But the weapon? It's already gone. They launched it. Earth is the target. Griffin felt his blood run cold. Those Talarian animals. It wasn't enough to oppress their own people. Now they wanted to butcher billions of innocents light years away. He balled his hands into fists, barely feeling his nails cutting into his palms. Connect me to Shaw now. The channel hissed and popped, the transmission scratchy and faint. Captain? Captain, do you read me? I'm here, Lieutenant Sitrep. It's bad, sir. The Doomsday Weapon is en route to Earth. It's a multi-stage device, some sort of Q-bomb powered by an artificial singularity. Scans show a blast radius of at least 500,000 clicks. Shaw's words tumbled out in a frantic rush. I couldn't stop the launch sequence. I... I have failed. Griffin slammed his hand on the console again as if he could reach through it to shake the lieutenant. The hell you have, son. You're coming home and we're going to find another way to stop this thing before it can murder billions. Get to the extraction point and... Negative, sir. Griffin paused. There was a note of grim finality in Shaw's tone that sent ice water trickling down his spine. Come again, lieutenant? I said negative. The weapon is shielded against external tampering. Our weapons can't touch it. He could hear Shaw take a shuddering breath. But I'm already through the outer casing. If I dump the ARC reactor into the singularity containment, it'll blow this thing to hell. Lieutenant, I'm giving you a direct order. Get your ass to the extract site, or I'll damn well court-martial you back to cadet. It was an empty threat, and they both knew it. Been an honor serving with you, Captain. You give that pointy-eared prick Sagan a few good licks for me. Then the line went dead. Moments later, long-range sensors lit up with the brilliant flare of a detonation blooming on the far side of Talaria. One that matched no known weapon signature, but had a yield several orders of magnitude higher than anything the Defiance could muster. Eerily beautiful in its destructive majesty. Shaw was gone. Just like that, another good man sacrificed on the altar of this goddamn world's insanity. White-hot anger bubbled up in Griffin's gut, flushing his veins with molten fury. Sagan. Zoltar. They'd pay for this. They'd pay for it all. He smacked the shipwide intercom. Battle stations, he barked. This ends today. The dust had barely settled from the final battle when Griffin found himself thrust into the unfamiliar role of peacekeeper. Zora Delarn, the fiery rebel leader with piercing green eyes and a shock of silver hair, stood at his side as they addressed the gathered Talarian officials. The age of tyranny is over, Delarn proclaimed, her voice resonating through the cavernous hall. Together, we will forge a new path for our people. But unity proved elusive. As days turned to weeks, tensions simmered beneath the surface. Griffin couldn't walk the streets without feeling the burn of hostile stares. Whispers followed in his wake. Go home, human. We don't need your kind here. The unrest boiled over one sweltering afternoon. A crowd of hardliners swarmed the temporary government complex, hurling stones and chanting for human blood. Griffin watched from a window as Delarn tried to calm the mob. Please, listen to reason. The humans are our allies. Her words were drowned out by angry shouts. Traitor puppet! A rock struck Delarn's temple. She stumbled, blood trickling down her face. Griffin's hand instinctively went to his sidearm, but he forced himself to stay put. 
this wasn't his fight. The next day brought worse news. A Talarian marketplace erupted in flames, dozens killed in the blast. A group calling themselves the True Sons of Sagan claimed responsibility, vowing to cleanse their world of human influence. Griffin's calm chirped. It was Davis, his voice tight with urgency. Captain, you need to see this. Minutes later, Griffin stared at the classified files, his stomach churning. Sagan's bioweapons research facility, hidden deep in the mountains. The potential for devastation was unthinkable. We have to secure it, Griffin said. Now. They assembled a strike team, a mix of human spec ops and Talarian rebels. The facility was a fortress, overflowing with automated defenses and fanatical loyalists. For hours, the mountain rang with gunfire and explosions as they fought their way inside. Griffin's boots squelched through pools of blood and worse as they cleared the final chamber. The stench of decay assaulted his nostrils. Row after row of containment cells stretched before them, each housing a Talarian test subject. Some were already dead, their bodies twisted and warped beyond recognition. Others moaned weakly, reaching out with deformed limbs. Griffin's hardened exterior cracked at the sight. Get a med team down here now, he barked into his comm, and someone find me the bastards responsible for this. Dalern arrived shortly after, her face a mask of shock and revulsion. By the gods, she whispered. How could they do this to our own people? Griffin placed a hand on her shoulder. Help me shut this place down for good. As they worked to secure the facility and treat the survivors, a thunderous boom shook the ground. Griffin's blood ran cold as Davis's frantic voice crackled over the comm. Captain, there's been an explosion at HQ. It's bad. Griffin raced to the scene, his heart pounding. The acrid smell of burning fuel filled the air. Davis lay on a stretcher, his uniform soaked with blood. Car bomb, Davis croaked. Barely made it out. Griffin's fists clenched. This madness had to end. Reports flooded in of villages being raised, their inhabitants slaughtered. The perpetrator's name was on everyone's lips. Colonel Votok, Sagan's most ruthless enforcer. Delarn's eyes blazed with dedication as she faced Griffin. We need your help, Captain. Votok must be stopped before he can unleash those weapons on our people. Griffin nodded grimly. Agreed. We'll hit him hard and fast. It's time to finish this. Griffin's eyes scanned the tactical display, the northern mountains rendered in stark relief. Red icons peppered the landscape, each representing a loyalist stronghold. One pulsed brighter than the rest, Votok's fortress. There, he said, jabbing a finger at the screen. Delarn leaned in, her silver hair brushing his shoulder. Heavily fortified, she murmured. Our spies confirm multiple artillery batteries and armored units. Griffin nodded grimly. Nothing the Defiance can't handle. We'll soften them up from orbit. Then you lead the ground assault. Hours later... Griffin stood on the bridge of the Defiance, watching Teleria's curvature through the viewscreen. All batteries fire at will. The ship shuddered as railguns unleashed their payload. Streams of tungsten rods punched through the atmosphere, leaving trails of superheated plasma in their wake. On the planet's surface, Votok's fortress erupted in a series of devastating explosions. But their victory was short-lived. An urgent transmission crackled through the comms. Captain. It was Delarn, her voice tight with anger. Votok's taken hostages from a nearby village. He's threatening to execute them if we don't cease fire immediately. Griffin banged his hand against the console. Damn it! All batteries, hold fire! He paced the bridge, mind racing. They couldn't risk civilian lives, but every second they delayed gave Votok time to regroup. Send in Shaw and his team, Griffin ordered. Night insertion. Get those hostages out. Under the cover of darkness, Shaw's SEAL team infiltrated the outpost. Griffin watched their progress via helmet cams, his fists tight as they navigated through enemy territory. Muffled thuds and choked gurgles marked the efficient elimination of Votok's sentries. Hostages secure, Shaw's whispered voice finally came through. Exfiltrating now. With the civilians safe, Griffin gave the order to resume the assault. 
the night sky lit up as Defiance's batteries rained hell upon Votok's position once more. Dalarn's ground forces advanced, human power armor units striding alongside Talarian rebel troops. Griffin watched from a gunship as they closed in on the fortress. Suddenly, the earth erupted. Votok's hidden armor units surged forward while concealed artillery pieces opened fire. Rebel troops scrambled for cover as explosions tore through their ranks. Bravo, squadron, take out those guns, Griffin barked into his comm. Human fighters screamed overhead, precision-guided munitions reducing Votok's artillery to twisted metal. On the ground, rebel sappers deployed makeshift IEDs, while others fired anti-tank missiles. Votok's armored advance crumbled under the onslaught. Griffin's Marines spearheaded the push into the compound itself. They moved from building to building, engaging in vicious close-quarters combat with Votok's diehard loyalists. Contact left! A Marine shouted, his rifle chattering. Griffin ducked as return fire chewed through the wall beside him. Frag out! Another Marine lobbed a grenade around the corner. The explosion was followed by screams. They fought their way deeper into the facility, the air thick with gun smoke and the copper tang of blood. In a lower level, they stumbled upon a horrifying sight. Row upon row of stasis pods lined the walls, each containing a Talarian soldier. Their bodies were grotesquely altered, limbs elongated and skin mottled with strange growths. What the hell is this? Griffin breathed. A nearby computer terminal provided the chilling answer. Votok's ultimate weapons, ordinary soldiers infused with Sagan's bioweapons and subject to complete mental conditioning. Before Griffin could process the implications, alarms blared. Pod after pod hissed open as the monstrosities within stirred to life. Open fire, Griffin roared as the first of the abominations lunged forward. The air filled with pulse blasts and the screech of inhuman voices. The bioweapon soldiers moved with unnatural speed and strength, shrugging off wounds that would fell a normal Talarian. Griffin's rifle clicked empty. He swung it like a club, smashing it into a creature's skull. The thing barely flinched, its misshapen hands closing around Griffin's throat. A burst of gunfire dropped the monster. Griffin gasped for air as Delarn hauled him to his feet. We have to end this, she said, her eyes blazing with fury. They fought their way through waves of Votox creations, finally reaching the inner sanctum. The colonel himself waited, surrounded by his fanatical honor guard. You're too late, Votox sneered. My creations will cleanse this world of weaklings like you. What followed was a brutal, close-quarters melee. Griffin and Votox circled each other, trading blows as chaos raged around them. The Talarian colonel was a skilled fighter, but Griffin's fury gave him an edge. A vicious right hook sent Votok stumbling. Griffin raised his sidearm, finger tightening on the trigger. Wait, Delarn's voice cut through the din. We need him alive to answer for his crimes. Griffin hesitated, then clubbed Votok with his pistol instead. The colonel crumpled to the floor, unconscious. With their leader fallen, the remaining loyalists threw down their weapons. The battle was over. But at a terrible cost, over 500 rebel dead littered the compound, alongside dozens of human marines and seals. In the days that followed, Votok and his inner circle faced justice. A Talarian tribunal found them guilty of unspeakable atrocities. Even as he was led to his execution, Votok ranted about the weakness of those who opposed him. His final words were cut short as the firing squad opened fire. With Votok's death, the last vestiges of Sagan's regime crumbled, but the scars left by their reign of terror would take far longer to heal. Griffin wiped sweat from his brow as he surveyed the ruins of Votok's fortress. The stench of smoke and death hung heavy in the air. Talarian medics rushed about, tending to wounded rebels and loyalists alike. Captain! Commander Davis jogged up, his face grim. I found something you need to see. In a makeshift command center, Davis pulled up a series of intercepted transmissions on a battered hollow projector. Griffin's eyes narrowed as he scanned the data. This can't be right, he muttered. I'm afraid it is, sir, Davis replied. 
Admiral Corbin's been playing us all along. Before Griffin could respond, alarms blared. He sprinted to the nearest window, heart pounding. High above, the familiar silhouette of the Defiance glowed against Teleria's moon. Suddenly, flashes of weapons fire erupted around the ship. What the hell? Griffin grabbed his comm unit. Defiance, come in! Static crackled, then an unfamiliar Telerian voice. This is Admiral Corvin. Your ship now belongs to me, human. Griffin's blood ran cold. He watched helplessly as Telerian shuttles swarmed the Defiance. The ship's point defense guns remained silent. How? he demanded. Quite simple, Corvin's smug voice replied. While you celebrated your Pyrrhic victory, my infiltrators disabled your crew with a neural disruptor. Your vaunted technology is now mine. The comm unit chirped again. This time, it was Delarn. Griffin, Corvin's ships are in orbit. He's demanding our immediate surrender or he'll open fire on civilian targets. Griffin's mind raced. Millions of lives hung in the balance. He clenched his fists, hating every word. Stand down, Delarn. We can't risk it. Not yet. In the days that followed, Corvin's iron grip tightened. Griffin watched from hidden safe houses as the Admiral's troops marched through city streets. Loudspeakers blared propaganda while squads dragged away suspected dissidents. This is insanity, Delarn hissed as they huddled in a decrepit basement. We didn't overthrow one tyrant just to bow to another. Griffin nodded grimly. Agreed. But we need allies. He turned to face the room's other occupant, a grizzled Talarian in a tattered uniform. That's where you come in, General Zoltar. Zoltar's eyes narrowed. Why should I help you, human? Because Corvin's gone too far, Griffin replied. You fought for Sagan, but even you must see this as madness. Zoltar was silent for a long moment, then nodded. What's your plan? Over the next weeks, they struck from the shadows. Griffin led raids on Corvin's supply depots, while Zoltar's loyalists sabotaged communications arrays. But it wasn't enough. They needed a game-changer. We have to retake the Defiance, Griffin announced. Under cover of darkness, Griffin and a hand-picked team infiltrated the spaceport. They clambered aboard a maintenance shuttle, every nerve on edge as they approached the captured warship. Go, 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 Griffin hissed as they breached an airlock. The corridors of his own ship felt alien as they crept through them. A Talarian sentry rounded a corner. Before he could shout, Zoltar's massive fist slammed into the guard's throat. They fought their way to the bridge, leaving a trail of unconscious bodies. Lieutenant Ramirez's fingers flew across the helm controls. I've got it, Captain, she shouted. Weapons and propulsion back online. The ship shuddered as Corvin's fleet opened fire. Griffin gripped the arms of the command chair. All batteries, return fire. Show these bastards what a real warship can do. Space lit up with the fury of their counterattack. One by one, Corvin's ships erupted into fireballs or drifted powerless. On the planet below, the Resistance seized their chance. Griffin watched on tactical displays as Delarn led an uprising against Corvin's troops. We've got him on the run, Davis reported. But sir, Corvin's ordering reprisal strikes against civilian targets. Griffin's lips pursed. Not on my watch. Zoltar, you said you had intel on Corvin's command bunker? The Talarian general nodded. I can get you inside, but it won't be easy. It never is, Griffin replied, checking the charge on his pulse rifle. Let's finish this. Griffin's muscles ached as he surveyed the gathered team. The faces of Davis, Ramirez, Hawkins, and the SEAL squad were etched with grim focus. No words were needed. Each knew the stakes. The stealth dropship's hull vibrated as it cut through Talaria's atmosphere. Griffin checked his pulse rifle one last time. Thirty seconds to insertion. The pilot's voice crackled over the comm. With a hiss, the dropship's rear hatch opened. Cold night air rushed in. Griffin nodded to his team and leapt into the darkness. The ground rushed up, his suit's thrusters kicking in at the last moment to cushion his landing. Alarms blared. Searchlights cut through the gloom. Contact front! 
a seal shouted. Pulse rounds sizzled through the air. Griffin dove behind a low wall, returning fire. Corvin's shock troops poured from the bunker entrance, their eyes vacant and movements jerky. A seal to Griffin's left screamed as enemy fire tore through his chest. Push forward, Griffin roared. He vaulted the wall, rifle chattering. Two shock troops fell, their bodies twitching. Inside the bunker, harsh fluorescent light glinted off sterile metal walls. The air stank of ozone and blood. Griffin's boots left red footprints as they advanced deeper. A bone-chilling shriek echoed from somewhere ahead. Griffin's skin crawled as they entered a vast chamber filled with glass tubes. Inside each, a Talarian writhed in agony, skin bubbling and melting. My God, Davis whispered. A figure in an admiral's uniform stood at a control panel, Corvin. His eyes blazed with fanatical zeal. You're too late, he snarled. Behold the future of Talaria. Corvin's hand slammed down on a glowing red button. Alarms wailed as vents in the ceiling hissed open. A sickly green mist began to fill the room. Gas! Griffin shouted. Two seals collapsed, clawing at their throats. Ramirez sprinted to a nearby console, fingers flying across the keys. Venting atmosphere! She yelled. The deadly vapors were sucked away, but the damage was done. Half the strike team lay motionless on the floor. A roar filled the chamber as massive, misshapen forms lumbered from the shadows. Corvin's augmented bodyguards, their muscles bulged grotesquely, veins pulsing with an eerie blue light. Take them down, Griffin ordered, opening fire. The monsters shrugged off the shots like they were bug bites. One of the creatures seized Hawkins, crushing his ribcage. With his last breath, Hawkins pulled the pins on his grenades. The explosion rocked the room, shredding the mutants. Griffin's ears rang as he staggered to his feet. Only Davis remained standing beside him. Corvin furiously jabbed at a control panel. You forced my hand, the Admiral raved. If I can't rule Talaria, no one will. Warning klaxons blared. A computerized voice announced, Bioweapon launch sequence initiated. Griffin raised his rifle. Davis, take out those consoles! They opened fire, sparks flying as circuitry shattered but not before Corvin hit a final button with a triumphant laugh. A distant rumble shook the bunker. Corvin's eyes widened in shock as a shimmering green wave burst from a nearby chamber. The Admiral's skin bubbled and sloughed off his bones as he collapsed into a puddle of liquefied flesh. Run! Griffin shouted. They sprinted through corridors rapidly filling with the deadly contagion. Griffin's lungs burned as they finally reached the surface. Ramirez waited in a hovering transport, her face pale. Go, go, go! Griffin yelled as he and Davis leapt aboard. The ship's engines roared to life, rocketing them away from the contaminated bunker. Below, the city burned. Rebel and loyalist forces clashed in the streets. But as news of Corvin's demise spread, the fighting began to ebb. Griffin sagged against the transport's hull, utterly spent. The horrors he'd witnessed would haunt him for years to come, but for now one thought gave him hope. Talaria was free. The acrid stench of burning chemicals stung Griffin's nostrils as alarms blared throughout the bunker. Votok's maniacal laughter echoed off the steel walls as toxic fumes billowed from the ruptured warhead canisters. Masks on! Griffin bellowed, fumbling with his own respirator. The sound of hissing gas and desperate coughing filled the air as his team scrambled to protect themselves. Delern's voice crackled over the comm. Griffin, we're cut off. The outer corridors are flooded with toxins. Hold your position, Griffin ordered, his eyes watering as he scanned the room. Zoltar and Votok had vanished in the chaos, leaving behind a nightmare of spreading contamination. Through the haze, Griffin spotted a bank of computer terminals. He dashed towards them, dodging sparks from damaged equipment. His fingers flew across the keyboard, searching for environmental controls. Ramirez, he shouted into his comm. I need those security overrides now. Working on it, sir. Ramirez's voice was tense. The purifier's encryption is a mess of got it. You should have access to local systems. Griffin's heart raced as he navigated through unfamiliar Talarian interfaces. He found what he was looking for, 
emergency containment protocols. With a silent prayer, he initiated the sequence. Massive blast doors slammed shut throughout the complex, sealing off contaminated sections. Ventilation systems roared to life, sucking away the toxic air, but it wasn't enough. The toxins were spreading too fast. We need to move, Griffin shouted to his team. Head for the upper levels. They sprinted through winding corridors, stepping over the bodies of fallen purifiers. The air grew thicker with each passing moment. Griffin's lungs burned as he pushed himself forward. Suddenly a figure lurched from a side passage. It was Zoltar, his skin blistering from chemical exposure. The Talarian general raised a pistol with a shaking hand. This is your fault, Zoltar wheezed. Alien scum! Before he could fire, Delarn tackled him to the ground. They grappled furiously, Zoltar's mad strength fueled by hatred and pain. Griffin moved to help, but Delarn waved him off. Go! she snarled. Get your people out. I'll deal with this traitor. Griffin hesitated for a split second, then nodded. He led his team onward, leaving Delarn to her grim task. The sounds of struggle faded behind them as they pressed on. They reached a junction, and Griffin's blood ran cold. To the left, a clear path to the surface. To the right, cries for help. Talarian voices, trapped civilians who had sought shelter in the bunker. Sir, one of his marines said, we can't risk... We're not leaving them, Griffin cut him off. He keyed his calm. Ramirez, we need an exit route from the east wing now. Captain, that entire section is... Find me a way, Lieutenant. Griffin led his team into the toxic miasma. They found a group of terrified Talarians huddled in a storage room, choking on the fumes. With grim efficiency, the Marines distributed spare respirators and oxygen tanks. Stay close, Griffin ordered the civilians. We're getting you out of here. They retraced their steps, half carrying those too weak to walk. Griffin's vision swam, his mask's filters struggling against the concentrated poison. Each breath was agony. Griffin! Ramirez's voice cut through the haze. There's an emergency shaft in the next corridor. It'll take you straight to the surface. They stumbled forward, Griffin bringing up the rear. He could hear the labored breathing of his team, see the fear in the eyes of the Talarian civilians. The shaft appeared ahead, a ladder stretching up into darkness. Go, Griffin ordered. Move! One by one, they climbed. Griffin's arms trembled as he ascended, every muscle screaming for oxygen. Above, he could see a circle of light, fresh air, safety. A metallic groan echoed through the shaft. Griffin looked down to see the ladder beginning to pull away from the wall, overloaded by their weight. He climbed faster, urging the others on as the whole structure shuddered. With a final heave, Griffin pulled himself onto the surface. He collapsed onto the ground, gasping for air. Around him, his team and the rescued Talarians sprawled in exhaustion. In the distance, he could see the smoldering ruins of the capital city. Pillars of smoke rose into the sky, a testament to the purifier's madness. But they had survived. They had saved lives. Griffin struggled to his feet, his body aching. There was still work to be done. The bunker had to be secured, Zoltar and Votok brought to justice, and somewhere in that toxic hell below, Delarn was still fighting. He keyed his calm. Ramirez, I need a status report, and get me a hazmat team down here. We're going back in. Eep. Griffin's boots crunched over broken glass as he surveyed the devastation. The Talarian capital, once a jewel of alien architecture, now lay in ruins. Collapsed buildings and crater-pocked streets stretched as far as the eye could see. The air hung heavy with acrid smoke, stinging his eyes and throat. Captain, Ramirez called out, her voice muffled by her hazmat suit. Atmospheric readings are stabilizing, but large swaths of the city remain highly toxic. Griffin nodded grimly. Any word on civilian casualties? Still coming in, sir. It's, it's bad. A group of Talarian survivors huddled nearby, watching the human soldiers with a mixture of fear and resentment. Griffin approached slowly, hands raised in a gesture of peace. We're here to help, he said, activating his translator. 
Medical teams are on their way. One of the Talarians spat at Griffin's feet. We don't want your help, human. Your liberation has destroyed us. Before Griffin could respond, the distant crack of weapons fire echoed through the streets. A Marine sprinted towards them, pulse rifle at the ready. Sir, true Talarian purifiers, they're attacking the aid stations. Griffin swore under his breath. Ramirez, get these civilians to safety, the rest of you, with me. They raced through the ruined city, the sounds of battle growing louder. As they rounded a corner, Griffin saw a group of black-clad purifiers laying siege to a makeshift medical camp. Human and Talarian doctors alike scrambled for cover as energy bolts sizzled through the air. Open fire! Griffin roared. His team unleashed a barrage, catching the purifiers off guard. Several fell, but the rest turned to face this new threat with fanatical zeal. Death to the alien scum! One of them screamed, charging forward with a primed grenade. Griffin's shot caught the purifier square in the chest. The grenade tumbled from lifeless fingers, detonating harmlessly in the street. As the last of the attackers fell, Griffin approached the trembling medical staff. A Talarian doctor stared at him, mandibles quivering. Why, she asked. Why do they hate us for accepting your aid? Griffin had no answer. He turned away, keying his calm. Defiance, this is Griffin. We need more security at all aid stations, and get me a secure line to Delarn. We need to talk. Hours later, Griffin stood in the bombed-out remains of the Talarian government complex. Delarn paced before him, her normally pristine robes stained with dust and blood. This is intolerable, she hissed. My own people turn against us, and now your Colonel Travis demands we hand over our remaining defenses? Delarn, please, Griffin urged. We're trying to help. Those weapons are too dangerous to... to be trusted to Talarians? Delarn's eyes flashed dangerously. We are not children, Captain. We can protect ourselves. That's not what I... A thunderous explosion rocked the building. Alarms blared as Griffin's calm crackled to life. Captain! It was Davis, his voice urgent. We've detected unauthorized access to a bioweapons facility outside the city. Someone's trying to move the stockpiles. Griffin locked eyes with Delarn. Her mandibles clicked in agitation. I swear I didn't authorize this, she said. I believe you, Griffin replied, but we need to move now. As they raced from the complex, Griffin knew the tenuous peace they'd fought so hard for was slipping away. The real battle for Talaria's future was only just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.